Welcome back to Jeep for Beginners, folks. Once again, my name is Josh, and today we are actually going to take a little bit of a turn from what we normally do, although it is fun to play with lights and play off-road and all kinds of Jeeping accessories. Sometimes there are necessities that need to be taken care of. So um, today we got a special treat. We are going to be replacing the engine oil cooler on the 3.6. So stick around. I think you're going to enjoy this. Alright folks, so welcome back. Like I said, we are going to be replacing the engine oil cooler on my wife's JK today. So hey, for those of you who own the 3.6 liter uh, V6, you know that a very common issue is it tends to leak oil from the plastic oil cooler housing. Um, unfortunately, when the weather turned cold this year, it kind of changed the direction of what we wanted to do with the Jeep as we started leaking oil. If you happen to be in an area with an HOA or you just simply don't like the oil stains on your driveway, then this is definitely something that we need to address. If you take it to a Jeep dealer or you take it to an aftermarket shop, you could easily be spending a thousand to two thousand dollars in order to perform this repair. I'm going to show you today how to get it done for under 400 bucks. So if you're ready, let's get started, shall we? All right. So for those of you with bigger tires and whatnot, I have personally found the easiest way to work on it, flatten the front tires. Let's get this thing down to about the level that we need to so that we can work on it. Um, oh, look at that. We have a friend arriving. What's up, Marco? Hi, buddy. How are you? I'm good. What you got going on? Uh, actually, today we are replacing the engine oil cooler on my wife's JK. Okay. You know, typical 3.6 liter oil leak problems. If you see my driveway. Yeah, I was about to ask you about that. Yeah, okay. You want to help? Sounds like a plan. All right. Let's dive right in. All right, well, since we have a special treat of having Marco with us today, and he is an ASC certified Jeep mechanic, we're going to let him kind of take the reins here. So, Marco, explain kind of an overview of what we're trying to accomplish. So, what we have to do is replace the oil cooler. And the oil cooler on your Jeep just so happens to be under the upper and the lower intake plenum. So, we have to take those off to be able to replace the oil cooler. Okay, and then this is a, a common problem, right? Yes, unfortunately it is a common problem Problem with the 3.6 liter engine. But we were just talking off camera just a second ago. Um, how many have you done in the last two weeks? I've done about 10 in the last week and a half. So we're, we're blaming it on the weather. Um, but like I said, it's a necessity and it's something that you as a Jeep owner is probably gonna bump into. So let's dive right in. So here's what you're gonna need in order to do this. <laughs> You're going to need a replacement oil filter housing assembly with an oil cooler. Comes with new gaskets and hardware. You're going to need a quart of oil just in case we lose some oil in the process. You're going to need a gallon of antifreeze because we are getting into the cooling system. You're going to need a can, at least one, if not two, of brake cleaner. Uh, we use to keep our parts nice and clean and to clean up our oil mess. And of course, we're gonna need some intake gaskets. So first things first, you gotta get the uh, intake off here. You got two eight millimeter fans. And then you have two 10 millimeters. bolts you're going to reach down in here and disconnect your intake air temp sensor that disconnected you can take your intake tube set that aside now we take a small screwdriver Disconnect our throttle body. Take a panel popper. Start taking off these Christmas trees from this bracket. 
right up here. We have another one at your intake. Another connector right here. And another Christmas tree. Once you have those two nuts and those two bolts off, you can take your bracket off, set that off to the side. And you have another two 10 millimeter nuts back here. Once we get those off, go over here to the passenger side. You have your transmission breather hose, comes off the intake and off to the side. You have another hose over here to your air filter housing, comes off, up and off to the side. And you have your PCV hose over here. Might be a little bare to take off sometimes. Grab your screwdriver, pry it off a bit, should come right off, comes right off the intake and off to the side. Now we have a connector over here and we have another two 10 millimeter bolts that we need to get out of our way. to pry that connector off of this bracket underneath. Now that bracket is going to be in your way to take off the intake, so you can pull it up and bend it out of your way a little bit. Not too much. That's just fine. Now for the sake of taking the intake off, let's make it a little easier and get these guys out of the way. Take a bungee cord, come right up here to your hood hinge, hold those out of the way. Got another hose right here. I'm gonna get out of the way. Same thing, might be a little hard. Just pry it out of the way. Right down there. Now you don't have to, but we also have this silencer back here that I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the way. It's just gonna make this job just a little bit easier. Comes off with two 10 millimeter nuts, bolts. Comes right out the back. Now you got this vacuum hose over here on the driver's side of the intake. Again, take your panel popper screwdriver, pop it out, get it out of the way. Now all we have left is the 8mm bolts that are holding the upper intake to the lower intake. And we can get this upper part out of there.
hands off. Pick it up. And some of the bolts might be stuck. So we can pull them up a little bit, including that one in the back. They'll be up out of the way enough. You can pop this guy up out of that bracket and up and out of the way. Now we just have to tackle the lower intake. We'll go ahead and get the silencer that's under the upper intake out of the way. We have to disconnect the coil packs on both sides, the fuel injectors on both sides, the Christmas trees for the harness, move that out of the way, get the bolts off for the lower intake, and it comes up and out of the way. You want to be very careful with your coil pack connectors because of this Nevada heat and cold that you get brittle. So take your time. A right angle pick will help you get the locks off of the fuel injector connectors. So these fuel injector connectors could be a little bit brittle so you do want to be careful and we got to get the fuel supply line off of the passenger side or driver side fuel rail now you are going to have a little bit of fuel so it wouldn't be a bad idea to place a rag right underneath to catch some of that now we take our panel popper Pop the Christmas tree off of the valve cover. Move this harness off to the side. The passenger side is a little, little bit more difficult. Take your time. I start by taking the harness off of the intake first now the fuel injector connectors on the passenger side are a little bit more difficult to get to. Again with a 90 degree pick you should be able to just pop the lock right off. Some are more harder than others so just take your time. And if the pick doesn't work, try coming in with your panel popper. Take your time.
I like to come in here with these grabber pliers to get these off because you do have a little bit of limited room. Now we can get to these 8 millimeter bolts that hold the lower intake to the cylinder heads. Once you get all those bolts off, you have one Christmas tree harness and one little Christmas tree holding this connector back here. Once you get those off, now you can take your lower intake out. And this is what we're trying to get to. This is the oil cooler. It's right here down in the valley of this V-type engine. Now you have three connections at the back of the oil cooler. You have your coolant temp sensor, you have your oil pressure sensor, and you have your coolant supply line. So let's get those out of the way. Be very careful with these connectors as they are in a hot to cold part of the engine so they can be a little bit brittle. For this coolant line, you have the option of so the bolts for the oil cooler are in eight E torques. Actually, these have special little fasteners under there. Before we keep going, let's take some shop rags and stick them down into these intake ports. That way we get no dirt, dust, debris, or anything inside the engine. And we're going to come back later and clean all of this. So now that we got those E-Torx fasteners loose, you want to rock your oil cooler back and forth around front to back to break the seal. Once that seal is broken, you're going to see that we still have the coolant line back there. It is easier to take the coolant line off once the oil cooler is off. So. You want to take some pliers just like these to cut the coolant flow so you don't lose too much coolant. And you are going to lose a little bit of coolant here. There is one little clamp here at the back holding it to the oil cooler. Get that guy off. With that guy loose, you can jiggle your hose off of the oil cooler. And 
And again, you are going to lose a little bit of coolant, a little bit of oil. And that's how you take your oil cooler out of your 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. So this is your oil cooler. Now, what happens to these over time, because of the heat cycles for this engine, these gaskets down here, they begin to leak. So that's why we're replacing this oil cooler today, with those gaskets right here. Now very, very rarely, your actual oil cooler will start to leak from right here as well, over here. And that is another reason why we replace these oil coolers. Now, just to, to butt in here real quick, um, when I was doing shopping for this replacement part, there is a lot of just the plastic uh, oil filter housing assemblies that are for sale. Not a whole lot that come with the oil cooler like this Mopar one that we have. Um, are we able to swap that cooler from one plastic housing to the other? Yes, we are. That is, they are interchangeable. Okay. And then if we look at these gaskets on the new one, you can see that they actually have some form fit to them. And it looks like they're gonna seal a whole lot better. Now that you have the area underneath your oil cooler nice and clean, get that oil out of there, get that coolant out of there. Now you just have to put everything back in the reverse of how you took it off. And you'll be done. So now that you got your oil cooler back on, you got your connectors back on and your coolant light back on, you're going to want to clean the top part of the cylinder heads where the intake manifold is going to be made to it. You also want to take this time to replace your upper and your lower intake gaskets. Your intake back in there, nice and slow, this time. Make sure it's in the right position. All your eight millimeter bolts are going to be started by hand. Make sure you got a couple threads on all of them so you don't cross thread any of them. It's very easy to cross thread these. That is gonna make for a bad day. Now you can run all of them down. Now if you have the experience with these, like I do, you can run them down with your gun. Or if you don't want to, you can run them down by hand with a ratchet. And you want to do that in a crisscross pattern. And for the sake of showing you guys, I am going to go back and tighten them all with a ratchet. Now they don't take a lot of torque at all because these intake manifolds are plastic. So Marco, what's the advantage to doing the crisscross pattern? Make sure that it's seated properly. 
it's not gonna warp on you in any way. Make sure all the gaskets are seated properly as well. Now from about this point, it's just a matter of reassembling it with the upper intake, your wires, your plugs, everything that you took apart in order to get down to that point. So we're gonna skip ahead and show you the finished product. So now once you have your last connector on, you might wanna go through and double check, make sure you got all your connectors back on, all your hoses back on, every bolt is tightened, top off your oil if you believe you lost any, check your dipstick, top off your coolant and let it bleed while the vehicle's running. So, Marco, a couple quick questions here. Now that we have this all back together, um, for somebody who has never done this before or a true beginner and they wanted to do this at home, how long would you anticipate it should take? You're probably looking at about three hours worth of work if you're doing it at the garage, you know, on the floor by yourself. You're looking about about three hours. And uh, as far as difficulty goes, I would probably rate it a three out of five because you are opening up the top end of your engine, you're opening up the coolant and the oil. So, yeah, I'd say about a three out of five. But completely doable for a handy do-it-yourselfer, right? Definitely. All right, are there any specialty tools that you need to do this job? I know you had a couple along the way, but. Yep. So there is, like I mentioned, the E8 E Torx bit that goes right on top of your oil cooler to take your oil cool off. And everything else, I mean, is just basically. Basic normal, hand tools, right? Basic hand tools, yeah. So. So there you have it folks, uh, oil cooler's been replaced in the wife's JK. Uh, we had the kids clean the driveway a little bit earlier, so hopefully we don't drop any more oil and we can move on to the actual fun stuff. So let's get it fired up, let's make sure it's not leaking and then uh, we'll get things wrapped up. All right folks, well there you have it. We got the oil cooler swapped out in my wife's JK, no more leaks, we can once again park it in our driveway. So I promise next time we'll get to something a little bit more fun. Maybe we'll talk about recovery gear or a history lesson, one of the two. But either way, just want to say thanks to Marco for stopping down and giving us a step-by-step. -step. And once again, my name is Josh. This is Jeeping for Beginners. And we will see you on the next one. There you go.